Hello and welcome, friends, to a brand new show called The Completion Bonus, a show that aims to demonstrate to you exactly how I complete the games that I do. Each episode will aim to be the response to a particular question. This week's question, what's the best way to get all 45 achievements, also known as feats, in Yacht Club's games is Shovel Knight. For me, I can get all these feats in three runs. This video will be a how-to guide on getting every single achievement, as well as a few tips and tricks to get you up to speed for completing this game. This video will assume that you have at least completed this game once, and that you have the basic fundamentals of Shovel Knight down. Let's start off with a few simple achievements and work our way up. The only you feat can be obtained very early on after you beat the first level. Just dig up that fire pit that you see when the level's over and boom, you're good to go. One down and 44 to go. On your first visit to the village, if you climb down the ladder and go to the right, you'll find Croker. He loves puns and has a lot to say and talk about. Talk to him until he's exhausted all of his puns to get the pungent feat. From the pungent feat, walk all the way to the left and attack the wall to find Mona, a very unimpressed person who will offer you a minigame that involves you hitting vials of chemicals into the wall padding. All you have to do is score over 150 points. You also get a sheet of music, which will help us get our quest for the fee later on, the Music Lover. It's as easy as it sounds. Buy an item, and after you've played the game a fair amount, purchase several more items, equaling to 25,000 gold and greater, to get the Hey Big Spender feat. And this one can be a bit frustrating if you haven't perfected the art of pogo shoveling. In the village, there's a kid playing with a little hoop. All you have to do is hop on this hoop for a total of 5 seconds. A lot of you will get frustrated with this one, but it's easy once you figure out the physics of the hoop. When you've got some cash saved up, head over to the Trapple Base Servant in the basement where Croker is. Purchase two i chalices and then make your way to the main overworld map. You'll see a level that looks like an apple tree. Head to this level to meet the Trapple King himself, half trout, half apple. Ask him to fill your chalices up and you'll pledge your allegiance to him, getting the feat Trapple Alkalite. And since you're already here, before you go, be sure to sample all of his i so that you can unlock the feat Ice Cream for i -Core. Let's start tackling the more difficult feats now. This one may seem hard, but once you've been playing the game long enough, it's second nature. Simply put, don't die on a stage. I recommend doing this one on the first stage. In fact, most of these feats I recommend doing them on either the Plains of Passage or Pride More Keep, unless otherwise shown. This one relies on you not swinging your shovel. Make sure you've got the dust gloves and just punch your way to Black Knight. Defeat Black Knight with all your relics and you'll get the Shovel Knight economy feat. Me personally, I prefer the propeller dagger, but that's just me. It'll make these fights much easier. This one's pretty straightforward. Don't eat any food products to restore health in one run of a stage. Take some health i with you just in case and you'll be fine. Easy. When you've purchased the fishing rod, you'll start to notice shimmering spots in each level. Fish up to five times and it'll get you the feat, the Master Angler. This one you can do pretty early on, or late in the game, or just whenever you're playing the game all the way through, really. Anytime an enemy shoots a projectile at you, knock it back to hit him. Do this 30 times to get the feat, Reflect Lord. I do this towards the end of the game. There's these samurais that shoot arrows at you and you can just kill them over and over and over again by walking back and forth between the screens. This feat isn't hard so much as it is annoying. Beat any stage that's not Plains of Passage without collecting one piece of gold. This sounds easy, but it gets very annoying because every enemy and block that exists drops gold in some form. The best way to take care of this is to use the Fire Rod to keep your distance. The key to this feat is to just kill and destroy and then be very patient and wait for time to pass for everything you encounter. When fighting Black Knight, during your battle, you can actually kill him with the projectile he throws at you. The first time around, he accepts the hit. The second time around, he knocks it back. But by round three, he's playing full-on Pong with you. Just get him down to half a hit point and smack the projectile once. You can do this as much as you want on the Plains of Passage. Since we're on the discussion of fighting bosses, let's talk about the Sparker feat. Again, playing the first level and fighting Black Knight will be your best bet for this feat. All you have to do is kill Black Knight with the Ground Spark, a move you can purchase from the Armory. You can only use the Ground Spark if you've got full life, but don't worry, with the Ground Spark and the first fight of Black Knight, he'll go down really quickly. You can literally just keep him at bay by spamming the attack button. It's that easy. 
Survive a battle with one of the Order of No Quarter Knights with full life. This is pretty easy to do with just enough practice, but in the event that you're struggling, you can take out the first form of Tinker Knight. At the start of the fight, use the gear wheel on him to one-hit KO him. Pretty cool, huh? This leads into our next feat, no damage. Don't get hit at all and beat a stage. Passage of the Plains or Pridemore Keep will get the job done. If you're paranoid about getting hit, the Phase Locket is your best friend for this feat. Feel free to pick up two Invincibility i cores if you can't handle it, but there's enough relics out there to make this pretty easy. You get this achievement for just getting halfway through the game. Pretty easy just for playing the game, right? And the difficulty goes up. Get the point involves you destroying every checkpoint in one stage in the game. This is a matter of risk versus reward, as destroying checkpoints gives you gold. As you progress through the game, you'll notice that every single level has checkpoints, and you'll want to destroy every single one in order to get the achievement called Checkpointless. This is very tough, but patience is your best friend. Just take your time, breathe, get a glass of water, don't be angry, you'll be fine, I promise. In the armory, there's a hat store with three people inside begging for gold. Give each of them 1,000 gold, and then you'll find a secret boss and unlock the achievement, Nice Hat. As you get further into the game, you'll see little sprites on the map that appear randomly. These are known as the Wandering Travelers, and you'll get a feat for defeating them. These fights aren't too bad, especially if you've been picking up all the relics up to this point. Speaking of relics, there's a few relic feats that we're going to tackle real quick. For the Relic Roundtable feat, simply kill at least one enemy with each relic. The Flare Wander feat is interesting but very easy to get. Once you've got the Propeller Dagger and the Flame Wand, go to the Plains of Passage. When the level starts, go all the way to the left of the screen and use the wand to fire a blast. As it starts, immediately switch to the Propeller Dagger and spam it to keep up with the Wand Blast. Eventually, the Flame will hit an enemy, granting you the feat Flare Wander. Just be careful to not hit the enemy with your Propeller Dagger. Head to the Lich Yard and equip the Alchemic Coin. Clear a few of the enemies on the screen and then approach one of the little green trees that you can use to launch you into the air. Deploy the coin and hit the coin every time it bounces off the tree. Do this five times in a row and the feat is yours. If you're smart and aware, you can get this feat very early on when you enter the Forest of Phasing. All you have to do is collect 2,000 gold while phase locking and standing on spikes where gold is. In the Forest of Phasing, this is what the mini stage is all about, but a lot of people tend to jump around a little too much and it negates the gold gained for the feat because you were in the air. If you didn't get this feat and you're struggling to still get it done after the late game, there's kind of a cheat you can do for this one. In the Lost City, right before you ride the beetle for the second time, go to the left and attack the wall to the secret area. Don't destroy the blocks you see with the dust knuckles just yet. Instead, jump out into the spikes and die. When you come back to the area to pick up your gold, phase lock it your way across the spikes to get the achievement. Kind of cheaty, but yeah, it works. Most walkthroughs on this achievement will tell you to do this in the Explodatorium at a certain part, but I found a more easier way. This feat has you suspending yourself in the air via the spam of the dust knuckles. Instead, go to the mini dungeon associated to Mole Knight and play up to this certain point you see here. Now, instead of taking the break to bounce yourself up to continue the chain of the dust knuckles, just hold right and at the precise moment, spam the dust knuckles again until you reach a cross. But be forewarned, once you beat this stage, you can't really revisit it ever again on the same playthrough. So, this is your one chance. This is your m, &M. Don't fail. Spaghetti on your sweater. In the Explodatorium, go to the area where you get the Alchemic Coin. In the area below, you can easily spam the Chaos Sphere to kill 5 enemies in 5 seconds and get this feat. Additionally, you can use the Gear Wheel and do the same thing to get the Clearing Path feat here, although the rats are very annoying and they'll do a pretty good job in making it hard for you to get it. In the straighted ship stage, towards the end, there's three ice climbing dudes on these ladders. To get the Arc of Iron Feet, all you have to do is perfectly time one anchor to Arc and kill all three at the same time. 
Play Pride More Keep up to the point where it looks like there's several flying rats building a ladder up to a secret ledge. Use them to propel yourself up there and then go to the right to the secret area. Quickly turn back around and equip the propeller dagger. Lure the rats to create a small version of the same ladder you used to get up there and use the propeller dagger on all of them without touching the ground three times. It's kind of crazy how I did it right here in this video, considering how high I was on the screen, but hey, I did it and you can do it yourself. It's not that hard. If you mess up, just reset the screen. You're good to go. You can get this feat in this area as well. Make five of the flying rats surround you and use the booming horn to kill them all at once. If you're a completionist, you'll do this one naturally. Buy every available item and upgrade in this game. Doing this will eventually get you the master shovelry feat as well. Phew, only 10 more left. For simply beating the game, you will unlock the victory feat, but if you are aware of the other feats, you will unlock them as well. The impossible feat is achieved without dying once. This is a huge pain in the butt, and all I can say is that you need to take your time. I would not recommend trying this on the first run. Attached to that feat also is the perfect platformer feat, which is don't die via a bottomless pit. Essentially, not dying will get you both of these feats. Once you beat the game, your game save file can be booted up again to either keep playing the game as you want, to revisit older stages with your character maxed out, or you can start New Game Plus. New Game Plus is a bit more difficult as they removed all of the turkey legs and apples from this run, meaning you just have to power through each level as best as you can. They also removed a few of the checkpoints so the game is less forgiving. With that said, at this point, you should be a Shovel Knight expert, so it should be no problem. Now, if you've been risky like I have and have been kicking tons of ass collecting gold via destroying the checkpoints and destroying all the monsters during the dream sequences, you'll get this one just fine. In the case that you haven't, all you have to do is save up to 50,000 gold. Although I've played this game a lot, I think it's pretty straightforward. You'll definitely pick this up in your New Game Plus achievement, especially if you don't spend any of your money, which reminds me. Beat the game without spending any cash. I recommend maxing out your character pre-New Game Plus to ensure that you'll never need to buy anything. It'll make this feat just so much easier. There's a level called the Hall of Champions. It costs 5,000 gold to get in, and it's a mini dungeon that reveals some of the musical sheets. It also contains a background with the faces of the Kickstarter backers. A fun little mini dungeon that's pretty straightforward. Clearing out this dungeon will get you the Hall Champion feat. This one's not as hard as it seems. If you're pretty good at figuring out secret passages and doing side quests, naturally, you'll find a lot of these musical sheets scattered throughout the game on your own. Getting them all will get you to defeat the music lover. I'd show you guys how to find all of them, but then this video would probably be another 45 minutes long, so there's tons of guides online that can easily show you the location of where they are, but like I said, it's pretty straightforward. But there is one I always forget to get in my run, and it's actually the Trapple King's Lair if you just fish. Fishing will get you an, a, a sheet music. Yeah. Food for thought. This one's not hard, but I chose to make it hard because I usually aim to get this achievement in tandem with another. This feat is to play the game without purchasing any relics. Like I said, pretty straightforward. However, for me, to optimize time, I challenge myself to get this achievement and the hurry up feat. Hurry up, without a doubt, is the hardest feat in the game. You must put your speedrunning skills to the test as you only have an hour and 30 minutes to beat the game. My rule of thumb for this is to ignore all the shovel hills you'll want to dig up. Use your invincibility frames with certain enemies and limit yourself to one or two deaths per stage. You'll rank in a lot of time just dying and retrying. If all else fails and you're frustrated, you can always reset the game from where you were just to be sure you don't ruin your time. But let's be honest, this game is fantastic, and you'll want to do it the right way. So aside from this long venture, what do you think? Did I help you enough? Would you like to see more videos like this on past games I've reviewed, or games in the future that I should review? Let me know in the comments below. These videos will not happen all the time, but we shall see. Anything is possible. Also, for those of you who don't know what I do, I'm known as The Completionist, and I review games 100%, and you can check out my brand new review of Shovel Knight right here. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.